Hey there, Boots Owen here. One of the questions that comes up a lot is how do I hotwire a washing machine motor? Generally, or for washing bricks in a washing machine or something like that, WMFUG742. This is a hot point one. The reality is that you probably want to use the motor for something more practical, like making a tool in your workshop, like a polishing head or something like that. So I'll show you how to do that today. So in underneath the washing machine is the motor. You could withdraw it or remove it from the machine if you wanted, or you can leave it in position. It's up to you for this task. First thing I'll do is disconnect the cables. This is the earth cable and it has a little tab on it that I need to push down to get it to disconnect. And then I note that we have two blue wires and five black wires. The two blue wires go to two yellow wires. The two yellow wires go down here to the taco on the end. Just forget about them for now. We don't need them for this process at all. That just pulls out, make it go away. Well, let's first look at the motor. We've got a green here coming from a brush on the end. We've got the other brush holder here with a white wire. They dive into something in here, probably into a thermal control thing. The green one from below here, I can see goes straight over to this green here. Then coming from within, we've got black, brown, green, and orange. So one of these wires, black, brown, green, and orange, goes to a brush because this brush has to go somewhere. So there's probably a thermal cutout in there and then the wire comes up probably through orange, I'm guessing, just only because it's beside the green, but that's a complete guess. Now, what we need to do is from the mains, and I've got a plug and a socket down here, which goes to my Variac, which ultimately goes to the mains, but isn't plugged in at the moment. So this gray cable, this is just a washing machine cable off a different washing machine. We've got live neutral and earth. If you want to earth it, you can. I might as well, because it'll keep the wires here. And inside here, if I could pop this off, I can show you. We've got seven spade connectors, possibly eight. Sometimes you can have way more, like nine, 10, 11, that kind of number. But ultimately what we're looking for is the two brushes and the coils going to the outside so the brushes get the power to the rotor on the inside of the motor and the coils are on the outside and given that there's three wires there's probably a big coil and a little coil if that if you want to put it that way um one for spinning and one for regular washing is how i describe it and if you look there's a sticker down here and i can see that it says 400 watts 1.9 amps but it doesn't tell me if there's a higher and higher one and a lower one some machines will say uh, like 17,000 spin and 2,000 spin for the motor, something like that. This one doesn't. The other thing I should have said, perhaps, or I can say it now, is that this is a brushed commutator universal motor. So a universal motor, it has a commutator ring in here that the brushes and the brush holders act on, and that gets the power to the rotor on the inside. It's not an induction motor, which some really old washing machines have, and it's not a three-phase motor or a inverter drive motor that has only got three wires and the taco so it'll only have five wires in total it clearly isn't one of those either it's a brushed commutator universal motor so what we need to do is take the power from the mains either cable and put it into a brush i guess that the orange wire is a brush that's guess number one I'll turn that around squeeze it in there maybe i'll take this out maybe i'll see it better if i take it out maybe you'll see it better so on the number one put on, the, on one side of a brush, put the mains coming in. Then take a jumper cable with a tap on each end, a spade connector on each end, and jump from the other, from the other brush to one of the coils. I'll just put it onto any one, I don't know which. And then take the mains out, and there's no in and out, it's alternating current. Take that back to the mains. Now we're wired up, let's plug in the Variac. I have it set to zero, you can see the dot is down here set that to zero and plug it in and hopefully we don't blow the mains no so let's uh bring up the voltage the machine is earth this time i don't often do that and if i've got it right this will work and if i haven't we'll need to change it 20 volts yeah and it's beginning to turn i can see what can you see that would show you turning let's just come around to the belt there you can see the belt over here and the pulley so it's 40 volts it's working you could also do this with a car battery. Um, 
these motors are universal, they'll run on AC and DC, that's what the universal means. So it really is as simple as that. This machine has very bad bearings and my plan is to throw a brick in it to, the, to destroy it. That'll be in a separate video if that's your thing. But if you just want to wire it for the shop, for the workshop, for some other purpose, you could put a fan on the end. They make a really good fan motor. The other thing I have made a video about before, um, these machines, these motors, you can get a control chip, a TDA 1085C chip. You can get them on eBay now quite cheap. And you can build up, if you look up the schematic for that, or the data sheet for that chip, it gives you a schematic to make a circuit board to control these. Prior to recent events, they were available on eBay pre-built from a certain large country that's uh, in the news at the moment, that eBay no longer seems to be dealing with. Um, but you can make them yourself. I've got one. I've shown it in a previous video about a grindstone and I haven't gone into any more detail because it's just a proprietary circuit board. You put the power in, you put the power out and you can have a potentiometer on it. What it does is it feeds off the two yellow cables here to get the speed of the motor. So it regulates the speed. This system regulates the voltage and thus the speed. You can also use a, a small silicon controlled rectifier or silicon controlled regulator, can't remember, SCR, if you search for SCR, or perhaps if you look at the comment section or the description section below, I'll put a link in, but you can get a small thing for a couple of quid, maybe five on the internet. Um, it's a little, it's like a little volume control for motors, but it has no feedback from the taco. So again, it just regulates the voltage and the speed, hence, but depending on the load, then you need to re-regulate the voltage with the knob. So it works fine for a fan, but not so much for a grindstone. If you're continuously touching chisels against it, grinding or something like that, it'll keep slowing down. That's about all I have to say and I've gone on for long enough, I suspect. So questions or comments as usual, leave them below. Check out the next video on this machine for a smash and uh, thanks for watching. See you later.